Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 31 of 100 days 100 concepts. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss about more circle. So many people have been commenting for this particular topic. But fun fact is, uh, you know, when I started this particular YouTube channel way back in 2018, more circle is one of the first videos which I have uh, already uploaded so if you have not watched it please uh, go and watch there uh, i'm giving the video in the icons and also in the description but here i just want to you know briefly explain what is this more circle so basically more circle is a graphical representation okay more circle is basically a graphical you know representation or graphical method for representing the state of stresses or the state of stress at any point on a plane usually we call it an oblique plane okay so what is it we'll just come to know so more circle is nothing but using the values of stress at any particular point in my you know material representing it in a graphical manner okay will give you a circle why how uh, you will get a circle and what is the derivation and all i am not going to you know mess up over here i am directly going to give the equation itself if you want to go through the derivation of how we got through this how the graphical representation is circle only then you can always go through our full course at everythingmetallurgy.com right so uh, the equation what you get is sigma n minus sigma x plus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau square will be equal to i think i'll just bring it down yeah this will be equal to sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau xy square so if you carefully observe this it is in the form of some x minus x1 whole square plus y square equal to r square. Okay, so this is the equation which you will get after solving for the state of stress at any point in an oblique plane. Okay, so usually what will it indicate so basically let's say this is the plane which i'm talking about and my applied stresses are uh, something like this let's say sigma x sigma y these are my tensile stresses or tensile normal stresses and uh, let's say i also have a shear stress this is tau y x okay let's say this is a plane stress element a 2d element correct now uh what we want to study is we want to study the state of stress at any particular point in this particular plane how can we do it that's what we are interested so for that reason usually we have different number of steps in order to go through it so basically we have that circle in the sigma tau space okay this is my sigma this is my tau which is the shear stress and what is the circle which i said the equation of circle is already mentioned just now right so how to construct this particular circle so the first step which you have to do is try to point out the points correct so let's say here you have uh, let's say that you have some point a has sigma x comma minus tau xy and b should be sigma y comma tau y x or tau x y anything is the same how we got these points it's simple actually we took the stresses that are you know applied on my body and i want to see how uh, i can you know represent in this particular sigma and tau graph that is what it is right correct now one thing uh, you must uh, observe here is in one coordinate, I took negative sign for shear stress and in other coordinate, I took positive. Why is this? So, this is because here while constructing the Mohr circle, the shear stress is usually expressed in a different manner, not uh, how you studied in the books or uh, in uh, other, you know, calculations. But here, the shear stresses which are causing a clockwise rotation 
should be taken as a positive so here as you can see this is in going upward so this is an anti clockwise direction so that's why i took okay the stress that is acting on this particular plane which i have considered a point on this okay so actually somewhere here let's say this is a so if it is a over here this is sigma x this is tau but because of its anti clockwise nature i took negative similarly on the other normal plane let's say this is b the stress is sigma y normal stress and i have clockwise shear stress okay so because of this clockwise rotation i can take the shear to be positive okay so now quickly you can do mark it so uh, sigma is positive and tau is negative this is some a and similarly you have some b over here right now the second step which you have to do is neatly join these two points okay so you can see that this point over here which is on the x axis sigma axis will be midpoint of a and b you can always check okay so now what you have to do taking this to be the center oa or ob as radius you have to neatly draw a circle okay this is the mohr circle okay this is these are some basic steps how to con, uh, construct this particular mohr circle now let's check with our equation what is my equation so my equation uh, previously was sigma n minus sigma x plus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau square correct this is the lhs so here if you see what is the center of a uh, circle in this form it is nothing but x1 comma 0 right because we don't have any y minus y1 we only have y so my center should be sigma x plus sigma y by 2 correct now if you carefully see what are the coordinates that we took a is sigma x comma minus tau xy b is sigma y comma tau xy or tau y x anything is the same because we are considering 2d now carefully observe what will be the midpoint c it is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 comma 0 so my equation is valid now what is the radius my radius so let me you know let me take this angle to be 2 theta okay fine so this is my 2 theta so why i took 2 theta because if you are you know uh, rotating by an angle theta so if you are rotating angle theta in this you will usually tend to get that particular stress states okay so now how you can do it is just you know something like this this is angle theta okay so this is angle theta so here in this particular you know location where my point is you know tilted by theta what is my stress state okay so for that purpose you should usually see that okay fine this is sigma 1 these are my principal stresses over here sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the principal stresses when my theta rotation is there and remember if theta is the angle of rotation in the physical element it represents two theta in the Mohr circle that's so important okay now so what is it uh, we want sigma 1 and sigma 2 which are the principal stresses so this over here this point will be my sigma 1 which is the maximum principal stress whereas here at this point you see sigma 2 which is the minimum principal stress okay so that's what we want here and remember the plane at which okay so the plane here in my case is theta right i assume that uh, i have no shear stress why i assume that because in plane where you find maximum shear stress sorry the plane where you find maximum and minimum principal stresses you find zero shear stress that is the reason why i omitted writing tau in this particular diagram okay so what is this angle theta 
so if you usually think this is nothing but you know the inclination of the plane remember why we called oblique plane we are telling that okay you are applying some stresses sigma x sigma y tau x y but you want to see at which plane in which plane of my body i am getting this maximum and minimum principal stresses in which plane of the body i am getting maximum shear stress all those can be done all those can be beautifully done using the particular derivation okay of course i did not cover here but i wanted to tell you okay now one more interesting thing that you have to see here is what is my radius over here so let's say that and this is same right this is my radius correct r so what is r over here according to my graph that is my tau max maximum shear stress so what is r over here so this is equal to tau max square okay so here you get tau max or the radius is equal to root over sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y whole square right so you can directly get the maximum shear stress value by just uh, measuring the radius so what is the purpose of this mohr circle okay fine we saw how we can con uh, construct and all this stuff and what is the physical significance also we saw but what it is i mean why it and how it is helping us so basically what it is helping us to do is without going all through uh, you know heavy calculations and derivations simply by using the length okay the length of the different axis or different uh, you know lengths you can easily tell now if you want to calculate the maximum principal stress sigma 1 over here you can directly take this is o let's say origin you can directly take oc plus r what is r tau max you know if you want sigma 2 you can easily do oc minus r so using this mohr circle itself you are able to directly tell what is the maximum value and the minimum value of the principal stress and also you can tell the planes okay now what is the other one uh, the other one which you want is again tau max itself which is the radius only directly you can get the radius similarly at any angle you can calculate at any angle you can see what is the amount of you know a stress that is present so let's say i want at this particular point what is tau and what is sigma what you can do you can just simply drop down correct that is how you got these values at a also right at point a i have sigma x and minus tau x y as my coordinates as my stress states what is coordinate coordinate is nothing but it is explaining you what is the shear stress that is acting at that point and what is the normal stress that is acting at that point similarly if uh, if you just take some any arbitrary point p just try to drop so this will be your uh, what a normal stress and this will be your shear stress it's that simple so using this one particular diagram you can you know explain any kind of state of stresses be it triaxial biaxial state of stress anything you can easily do okay so one uh, easy diagram without wrapping this video so let's say this is tau this is sigma we know uh, let's say i have uh, two circles something like this okay so here it's not 2d now you have three different stresses but so what you you should do is you also have, should have one big circle like this okay so assume these are touching okay correct now you have three different stresses what are those number 1 number 2 and number 3 these are my sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 correct so this is explaining you a triaxial state of stress okay let's say uh, if this whole setup is here like this it is triaxial state of stress but the minimum stress over here the minimum principal stress is zero so this is what uh, you can do similarly you can do many stuffs using this particular uh, concept of mohr circle so i hope 
with this video uh, requests of many people has been you know fulfilled now and uh, thanks for the support that you are showing on this series even after a break of one week uh, you know i see comments asking where are the videos so thanks for that so before uh, you know ending this video i want to thank each and every one of you to support everything metallurgy you know uh, to be where it is uh, today right so if you are interested please go through everything metallurgy.com and see the video courses which are helping each and every one for gate metallurgy 2021 as well as 2022 of course you can also take one of the most affordable test series at only 799 rupees okay we are very proud to tell no one is providing at that affordable prices but uh, we nailed it in the first attempt itself okay so thanks for that and uh, yeah that's it from my side meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept and uh, yeah please check out at everythingmetallurgy.com the early bird discounts are ending on october 10th thank you guys thanks for watching